Experiment number 12, determination of the frequency of a tuning fork using the sonometer. The materials and apparatus required for this practical is a sonometer, a tuning fork of a known frequency, of an unknown frequency, which we are going to find, uh, a set of 0.5 kilogram weights, a light paper rider, a piece of, sono uh, a piece of sonometer wire, a mid ruler and a triple beam balance. So uh, first I'm going to show you what a sonometer is. A sonometer is a device like this. It's a wooden box and uh, in inside the sonometer you have an air column trapped inside it and usually there are two wires. Usually there are two wires. Both of these are sonometers. So one wire is connected to a pulley and then you can add masses to that. Also the vibrating length of the wire can be changed by moving these wedges. You can move it and by that you can change the vibrating length of the sonometer wire. Right. Here's a small detail about the sonometer. It has an air column trap, it uses resonance to vibrate strings and air column. So it uses the concept of resonance. Length of the string can be changed using mobile wedges. Tension of the string can be changed using the weights. Right. So let's see how the practical is done. So here we are using only one tuning fork of an unknown frequency and we are doing the practical in order to find the frequency of that tuning fork. And also we are doing this experiment for the fundamental for the fundamental state of the wave uh, station the wave that we produce. So you know in fundamental state we have only one loop like this. Only one loop like this. So we are obtaining the fundamental state for different different tensions of the string. So we can write the equation for the fundamental state if is equal to v over lambda and you know v is root t over m velocity of sound waves inside a stretch string is tension square root of tension divided by mass per unit length this is mass per unit length and you already know this right divided by lambda lambda is 2l because one loop is lambda by 2 so we can expand the equation in a way to get a graph equation here the variables that you can change is t so t is equal to mg because here we have a weight of mg t equals to mg so you can substitute instead of t you can substitute mg here so you can change the equation in a way that you get a y is equal to mx type of a graph so the graph that you get the graph equation that you get is L squared equals to simple G over 4F squared M into capital M. This is exactly like Y equals MX. So now we can change the mass and based on that the length will change the resonance length of the wire for the fundamental will change so we can make a graph between m and l squared and using the graphs gradient you can find out what f is because g is a known value this is m mass per unit length of the wire which is also a known value you can use a uh, full beam balance or triple beam balance and you can use uh, the meat ruler to measure its length so this is a known value this is a known value 
so you can calculate f when you know what the gradient of the graph is so this is the concept of the graph uh, the experiment you draw the graph and from the graph you obtain the frequency of the tuning fork right so let's see how to start the practical and how we do the practical right so you take the tuning fork you take the tuning fork uh, there's a piece of rubber you can hit the tuning fork on that piece of rubber not on any of the hard materials you can hit the tuning fork on the rubber and it begins to vibrate so when it vibrates you are going to keep the tuning fork on the sonometer box as you can see here you are going to keep the tuning fork on the sonometer box in a way that it does not get contacted with the wire if it gets contacted with the wire the wire won't oscillate so we are just putting it on the sonometer box a bit away from the sonometer wire so they have no relationship so what happens is when you keep it on the sonometer box the vibration energy gets transferred to the sonometer box and through the sonometer box it gets transferred into the air column inside so the air column begins to oscillate or vibrate and that vibration will also go to the wire so the wire will also begin to vibrate right so it's like force we are forced oscillating the wire using the sonometer we are forced oscillating the wire by the energy given by the tuning fork so the energy being transferred from the tuning fork to the sonometer box and to the air column and again to the sonometer wire so the sonometer wire oscillates vibrates so when it resonates when the frequencies are equal it will resonate when the wire's frequency is equal to the frequency of uh, the tuning fork it will resonate and we are going to understand identify the resonance in this right so there are three ways of identifying the resonance three ways of identifying the resonance right so the three ways of identifying the resonance are by hearing using beats or using paper riders so in the experiment this is what we mainly do we use paper riders using paper riders what we can do is we can place a paper rider on the wire so and you increase the length increase the length how do you increase the length is that you start you start keeping this wedge very close to the initial one and you increase the length between the wedges right you start from zero length and you increase the length between the wedges so that at one point you can see the paper riders which are kept on the wire paper riders are kept in between paper riders are kept in between the wedges not away from the wedges this is wrong if you do that the riders are kept in between the wedges so you can see at a certain point the paper riders are being flown away they fly away so we can assume that when they are being flown away that is close to resonance so you can do once again or a few more times to make sure whether that is the most intense point now you know what resonance is resonance is when an object is force oscillated if it absorbs maximum energy when it is oscillating with its natural frequency is what we call resonance right so when this wire is resonating the amplitude is going to be very high so when the amplitude is highest the paper riders also have to move up and down with the maximum amplitude so they are going to be thrown off from the wire so from that we can identify that we have achieved the resonance scenario where the frequency of the wire is now equal to the frequency of the tuning fork so by that we can find the resonance so you can change the length a bit more and less and by trial and error you can find out what is the exact resonating point so that is one method of doing it there are other two methods by hearing some have a good ear 
mostly the musicians they can do this so when they oscillate the tuning fork they know the sound of it and when they uh when they pluck when they pluck the string string also makes a sound like the guitar so they know that sound as well so when the two frequencies are equal they can identify by hearing so that is tuning by hearing right people can tune guitars also by hearing so likewise you can do this by hearing but it ha- you should have a very good ear to do that you should have a proper practice to do that otherwise it is advisable not to do uh not to identify resonances by hearing right then also you can identify by beats how do you identify the resonance by beats you can oscillate both the wire and the tuning fork at the same time you pluck the string as well as you hit the tuning fork on the rubber at the same time so you can hear the two frequencies so when they are close you can hear you begin to hear beats so when you increase the distance between the wedges from zero starting from zero and when you do this you oscillate both of them at the same time so now you can hear beats so when you increase it the beats frequency you can also hear that it's going to reduce little by little so beat frequency is going to reduce and when the beats frequency is reduced and come to zero that is resonance if you can hear beats that means both frequencies are not equal and when you increase the length furthermore you can hear that beat frequency is gradually reducing and the beat frequency will come to zero at one point and that point is the resonating point so hearing beats is also a good method that we can do so we give number 1 for this number 2 for this and number 3 for this because this requires more skill this does not require any skill this requires a skill hearing skill to some extent right so this is how we identify the resonance okay so we know that we do this practical for the fundamental state fundamental not the first two or two not the second two or two not the third two or two just for the fundamental so how are we going to make sure it is the fundamental so in order to make sure it is the fundamental what you can the, the only thing that you can do is you can start increasing the length between the wedges from zero so for the first time when it resonates that is the fundamental and if you increase the length from the fundamental also you get another position where it resonates that is the first two or two so we don't go that far we start increasing the distance between the wedges from zero so at the first time where you can see the resonance is the fundamental right so do we have to do this from the beginning always that is the question right so let's see whether we have to do this from the beginning always okay so there are two ways that we can apply masses here put masses here there are two ways one thing now you are you are using 0.5 kg weights here so you can put initially a 0.5 kg weight another 0.5 kg weight another 0.5 kg weight likewise so you can start from the lowest mass and increase the mass you can do that also you can do the other way as well you can increase with uh, you can start with the highest mass and reduce the mass so both ways are okay so we need to do this in a way that we achieve our goals our goal here when you are drawing a graph we need at least six points we need at least six points so according to the graph equation you know when you increase the mass the length resonating length of fundamental will also increase so if you want at least six points the mass that you have to put on this at the end is going to be 0.5 into 6 that is 3 kg 
So when you increase the mass up to three kilograms, sometimes the length of this wire might not be sufficient enough to get a resonance length. So if you want to check that, if you want to make sure that you get six points, then you can start with the highest mass. Then you can start with the highest mass. Means that you are putting all the six onto this at the beginning and then you start increasing the length from zero until you find the first resonance point. If you can get a resonance point, that means the length of the wire is sufficient to do this experiment. So from that point onwards, say as an example, you got this point as the resonance length for three kilograms. Then you don't have to do it from the beginning once again. You can reduce 1.5 kilogram mass and it will be 2.5 now. So now the mass is 2.5. So for 2.5 mass, you know, the length has to be lesser than that. So you can just reduce the length. You can just reduce the length from this point onwards until you hear resonance. That is also the fundamental for that particular uh, mass value. And then you can remove another 0.5. So it will be 2 kilograms. Then again, you can start from that point, the previous point, and reduce the length. So one way that you can do is you can start from the highest mass, then reduce the masses continuously. And also you can do the other way as well. That you can start from the lowest mass, means that you are going to put 0.5 kilograms at the beginning. You are going to use 0.5 kilograms at the beginning. And you are going to start increasing the length from zero. And at a certain point, you get a balance, uh, you get a resonance point. Then you add another 0.5 kilogram mass, so it's one kilogram. Now you don't have to come from zero. You can start from here and increase because you know that particular resonance length has to be greater than the previous. So you start from that point onwards. So both ways you can do. But starting from the highest mass is going to make sure that the length of the solometer wire is sufficient to do this experiment. Right. So you can see a few critical points here. Right. So the final point says the mass is calculated by obtaining the M is calculated by obtaining the mass of the wire using a four beam balance. We're using a four beam balance for this because four beam balance, as you know, is more accurate than triple beam balance, which has a least count of 0 0.01 grams. So we are using the four beam balance for this. You are measuring the mass of piece of a sonometer wire, and you also use the meter ruler to measure its length. So you can calculate the M value. So this is how we do the practical, the solometer first practical. There are two solometer practicals. This is the first practical which uses one tuning fork and the next one is the practical which uses a set of tuning forks.